All right, we are approaching the end of this season of Fear the Walking Dead. I'm sad, but I'm also excited because that means the beginning of The Walking Dead. Oh, I know. What a roller coaster ride, or I guess uh, uh, more of a, a trailer tractor ride. But either way, man, <laughs> was, golly, what a start to this episode. It was. It was a good Woo! one. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I said, woo! Well, this was episode 14, uh, MM54. Or was that supposed to be millimeter 54? I don't, I don't know. know if it's supposed to be like mile marker 54. There, that is. is that, man, that you're... It? Man, yes. It's, forgive me. It's Monday. It's flooding. It's raining. It's dreary. My mind is... Not where it should be. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. Lots of stuff on the radio and in, in the sky. Yep. My you girlfriend's just... cats last night were being really obnoxious, so I probably got an hour of sleep, so I'm going to be yeah, my probably cat, not good today. My cat was doing all right. I, I still didn't get to sleep till after a little 3 a.m., but I we're here. Do it. I actually just watched the episode. Man, I could not be happier. I've really enjoyed this season. Like Woo. even even yeah, even I the slower moving. points, yeah, I've been so I've been very fond of uh, this episode. Picking up right where we left off last week, where we now know her name is Martha. Yeah, the mysterious Just, filthy yeah, woman. Martha. straight up gun through the the uh, the tractor trailer. Which luckily no one was was seriously injured during. You know what I mean? I thought That's somebody true. was going to be dead, but no one was seriously injured. Um, you know, we had like a wound in the arm, but I mean, that's pretty much it. Well, man, um, <clears throat> what would you think of that little origin uh, story we started out with, man? I thought it was good. I mean, don't get me wrong. It doesn't excuse her behavior, but I, I thought it was well written in the sense of seeing where she's coming from about not helping people. Yeah, and she just straight up had like a psychotic breakdown. I mean, she, you know, has to put her husband down, like all these people just driving by, you know. And I thought it was a good scene showing her uh, after she buried her husband with her hands, by the way. Yeah. Like dug his grave with her hands but i thought um you know that scene after she had buried him where it showed her kind of talking to herself and she's crying and she's laughing kind of showing her her breakdown i thought that was really well done it, it kind of had some shades of like an early morgan there just using the stick to impale people just straight up murder right. and turning the you know what what turned into like like morgan's you know trademark of uh of pacifism i guess that's a word yeah i love it. it you know it just oh boy oh boy yeah i thought the I, angry english teacher, i think that's, that's for sure i think that's kind of what they're going for too is the whole um you know kind of parallel to morgan like you know a psychotic break kind of right. term which i mean you know the, the morgan can come out of his psychotic breaks um but he did stay in one for a while before he and eastman got together but you know, he kind of snaps into it, and then he'll snap out of it. She's just, like, stuck in it. Like, she's just done. But uh, we did see her get clipped one good time. She took that shotgun blast like a champ. Yeah, man. Just I just... sat up and looked at her arm like, really? She's, she got that crazy, <laughs> like, mentality where, you know, she just, Love I don't you. know. Love, he's like, next one going to lay you down. <laughs> Man, he should have just went on. Went on <laughs> right, I wouldn't. Down, you know I wouldn't saying? have gave that warning, man. I would have already. I mean, she just emptied uh, some machine guns into the to the cab. Well, to, into your entire transfer truck. I mean, I, I'm just going to lay you down. Period. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, but good episode. And poor, uh, poor, poor guy, man. Um, Jim. D- d- Jim. Yeah, I wanted to say Mark for some reason. Yeah. Jim. Yeah. Getting... That's because our boss's name is Mark, and there's been a few instances anyway. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> man, yeah, but the thing man, is, man. where? How did he get? I mean, I guess maybe his shirt came up, but there was no bite marks through his shirt. I mean, did he get bit through his shirt or? You know, like, at what point? I mean, I know he went through the glass, but, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out at what point the zombie rolled him over, bit his back. He didn't, you know. I, I guess just in, like, in the struggle, you know, in the struggle. Yeah. Things definitely uh, never seem to end up good on The Walking Dead when you're in a hospital or your name Jim wasn't. Uh, yeah. Jim no, got J- bit yeah. like season mm-hmm. one Walking Dead, right? Yep. And he's kind the one they left at the tree. Too. Yeah, so. Yeah, I don't, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. His was kind of like that part, but on his front side. But yeah, like kind of midway yeah. through his, and, and it was where, discovered. Where Carl got bit too. It was similar to, uh, yeah, it was. It was similar to how it got found too. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. They kind of forced him to lift his shirt up and show everybody. But I mean, it was kind of like you know, kind of one of those things where it was a reveal. Like, you know, yeah, very similar, very uh, parallels there between Jim and Jim's bites. You know, neither one. Well, never mind. I'm tired. No, Jim did. Jim from The Walking Dead did know he got bitten, yeah. but he didn't say anything. Whereas this Jim didn't really know. But still, both hidden, both 
but man, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I mean, Jim. Up until now, I'd, I'd kind of liked him. You know, I'm a I'm a craft beer fan myself. But man, he's being a whiny little bitch. Yeah, this he episode, was. You know, just bitching at Morgan the whole time. Like, well, and then he dude. was about to apologize for the whole like I'm sorry for saying you got us into this, yeah. and then some shit happens, and he turns right around, right to, back you around, know. right. I'm like, geez, dude. I mean. You know, people need medical attention in a hospital while, I mean, yeah, it's probably going to be fraught with the dead. I mean, it seems like a logical place to go. Right. Not to mention, you know, you need a wheelchair for, I mean. Man, if you could clear out a hospital, like like truly clear it out, you know, get you a team big enough to go in there and clear it out and then fortify it, a hospital would be a great place to survive the apocalypse. Be, but man, in the world of the walking dead, you're either going to get stranded on the roof and have to cut off your own hand. Or you're gonna get shot by a crazy policeman like Beth did, mm-hmm. or uh, just, or crazy racist like T Dog almost got like shot T- by. Yeah, I mean nothing <laughs> good is going down in hospitals in the world of The Walking Dead. Just nothing. which I know they were in a department store in season one, but still they were rooftops, and we both know we know that rooftops in The Walking stay Dead off just the roof, yeah. stay out the hospital. Nothing good's gonna come. <sighs> yeah, too bad Morgan wasn't on the rooftop with uh, Merle. That might have went a lot different. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Morgan ain't playing. Poor T Dog. I love T Dog, but T Dog won't much of the the fighter like Morgan is. But nah, he didn't. He didn't last long. But yeah, and he didn't really have many lines. But you still really liked him. Yeah, yeah, he's a likable for guy. Reason. Yep. Just his face. I have the little honest. statue of him with the riot gear and the like. Oh, the poker. is that right? Mm-hmm. Every time I walk by, I'm like, much love, T Dog. Yeah, you, you need to just do like an in memoriam kind of section. For I do you know, those characters, you know. <laughs> Have like a picture from the show of their death and put it behind their figure. Yeah, nice, nice little like lit candle, you know. Would you? Th- so at the end of this episode, I know we sometimes we're so sporadic. Sometimes we try to go in order of the episode. Sometimes we don't. So I'm jumping to the end here. You okay. imagine that was? What do you think they saw across the river? I mean, that was obviously John Dory's hat, right? Which of I? How random is that? You know, in this entire area to find John Dory's hat. But do you think that that's who they saw across the river? Uh, that's what I'm hoping. And uh, if it is, get away from that riverbank. Yeah, for we know gators, there's a man, man eating evil gator that is in those waters. Like, get away from the water. Like, what if that's what it is? Like next episode, they're smiling and waving, and they're like, get away from the <laughs> yeah. bank. Poor Charlie just gets like snapped under, which I know Ooh. she wants because I saw her on the scenes it looks like from the scenes from next week's episode we're going to see kind of everybody get back together or at least a majority of everyone yeah we need to need to see everyone come together they got to get off that roof what do do you think the plan is there i know what my plan would be what gut jim where is uh innards and you know make my way out of there would you let him die first, though? Like let him turn, uh, then no kill time, him. Then no time. We got Jim. Got to go, pal. We need I don't know how we're gonna we survive. Need your guts. I don't know if you and I would be able to survive the apocalypse. I don't know that I would ever sleep, or I'd have to sleep like high in a tree somewhere where you couldn't get me. I mean, brother, you you get bit. I'm just doing you a favor, you know. I just just you know get right with your gods and let me, <laughs> let me use your insides for my well, not my pleasures, but for my practical purposes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Practical. Yeah, it would be very practical. In that situation, man, they got to do something. Well, Alicia trying to do something very sweet for Charlie. Like, she she knows, and it's kind of like the roles reversed because, you know, uh, Alicia wanted to find the group, and Charlie was the one that was like, you don't even know if they're, you know, Alicia gives her this, like, shut mm-hmm. your mouth looks. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it kind of changed, and Alicia's trying to do something sweet. She's like, all hell's broken loose here. Everything feels lost. Maybe if I can just get Charlie to a beach. To let her see the ocean, you know, at least some good will come out of all of this. And she's trying to get her to the beach. Um, and then when Charlie's like, look, a beach. I want to be like, that's a riverbank. <laughs> and that is not a beach. Yeah. And that is, I, I live, you know, I, I spend a lot of time on riverbanks. And I also am a huge beach fan. I can tell you they're not that similar. No, you still no, need to get so to much. the beach if you really want the full experience. Right. I mean, there's still lots of things in the ocean that want to eat you too, but. There's a there's a man eating alligator in those waters, so you need to not in, not be around that. But uh, but yeah, Alicia trying to do something sweet for Charlie, and then you know Charlie being the voice of reason. Like we got to find these people, man. Like these are our people. It's it's going to be really hard the two of us. And at the, the, the Charlie, man, she's a good little actress. Yeah, I can see a terrific, good ca- good good career ahead of her. She's 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 done a really good job on this show. She looks really familiar, and I can't place where I might have seen her as a kid and something else. Hmm, I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Oh. 
But yeah, lots of action, man. Lots of action. Lots of good stuff. They still without a ride, you know. Big Rick's exploded. No beer. No, no wheelchair. No wheelchair. Well, he he, he found a. Did he find a new one in the hospital? Maybe. No yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like when they were dragging him up the road, man, I was like, that sucks. Yeah. You got this whole herd of zombies behind you, and you know you're dragging this guy behind. I'm sure it's no picnic for him either, because he's like, man, I hope these people don't like just right. give out, and and then I am, you know, trying to. Cr- you know, I, I, Jim freaking lasted like five minutes pulling him before he, you know, <laughs> tired out. Poor Jim. Typical hipster. Yeah, man. Bro, I want to get you to Virginia and make you some craft beer. I really did kind of want him to be able to get to Virginia, though. But yeah, I mean, he definitely had a cool like skill set we haven't seen before. But how important do you think that is in the apocalypse? What, making beer? Well, not just that. Making. All right. It's kind of like the argument that Lori and Andrea had in season two. Uh, in Herschel's kitchen where they're talking and, you know, uh, Lori kind of accuses Andrea of not helping out around the farm, basically says she just sits up on the RV working on her tan all day. And, you know, Andrea's like, I'm keeping watch for walkers, you know, blah, 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 blah. And Lori's, you know, that's much that's much more important than cooking dinners and, and doing laundry. And, you know, Lori's like, we're trying to create stability here. Like, is that, would that be important to you in the apocalypse? Like after you've got yourself somewhere to live, you've got yourself a perimeter set, you know, you've got guards, lookouts, you know, all of the, the, the first step stuff is done. Now you're just kind of living there. How important to you would it be to create like some sense of normalcy for these people? Or are you more like Rick and them were when they first got to Alexandria and think you should, Never get that comfortable. No, nah, yeah, every everyone needs a part to play. I'm kind of like I got the John Smith mentality from Jamestown. You know, you don't work, you don't eat. No, oh, absolutely. Well, that's kind of what Rick does too. Like in the comics, you know, Rick mentions that to uh, Pamela. Which quick, not really a big spoiler, but a little comic spoiler in three, two, one. But when Pamela and Rick meet, you know, she he tells her he's like, you know, we don't really have class systems. Everybody just helps out in any way that they can, and in return, you know, everybody eats. So we kind of all work together here. Yeah. Um, but no, absolutely, I would have, I'd, I'd be one of those. Look, you're welcome to come stay with us, but you, everyone has to put in something. Whether you're doing laundry, helping build a wall, or going on runs, just as long, everybody needs to contribute a little something to keep everybody going. But is the normalcy important to you? Like, would you think things like I don't even want to say beer because obviously we know making beer in the apocalypse is important. But things like good home cooked meals and entertainment, things like that, would they be important to you to keep your people entertained in the zombie apocalypse? Or would you just be like, no, we're going to be a militarized camp. No one gets normalcy. We're just always on edge for an attack. No, after a certain point, I think you can establish that. I think it'd be good to have like a, a guitar like singer songwriter kind of guy in the group and you know we might get along during the apocalypse i feel the same way i feel like you got to establish i mean in order to keep people calm and from number one getting so bored that they you know do something like rebel or you know just get bored and start thinking i think i'd leave this place better you know like give them something to do let them have games let them have entertainment let them have beer you know because if it it just people can go stir crazy after a while just always being on edge and then you could crumble so Good. Maybe we would survive in the apocalypse. I still wouldn't. I, if we had a civilization, I'd lock my door every night because I don't know when you would come in and well, use that, me for. That's true. And, and you know, there's keeping the, yourself on alive. The, the other side of the coin, there's always the whole like bread and circuses argument. You know, like like the Roman Empire, like certain sort of like totalitarian governments, kind of keep the populace docile. Just you know, keep them fed, keep them you know sports to distract them from you know what's really going on behind the scenes. So. Who's to say, man? You know, I mean, Rick could be uh, in these circumstances develop like a welfare state where people are just, you know, too fat and happy to really see what kind of sinister things are, are lurking. Kind of like a govern, governor kind of thing. Yeah, you've kind of got you know? a balance. You although gotta, although you know. the governor, his his games were like, you know, zombie wrestling. Oh, it was zombie wrestling. gladiator. Yeah, 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 whatever whatever he was doing. Kind of like instead of having the lions and the tigers on chains as you were fighting – you know, you just have walkers, but yeah, now you got to find the good balance. You got to keep people entertained, give them some sense of stability and normalcy, but also not lose sight of the threat that's out there, right? Like you'd yeah. have to find a perfect balance there. Like, look, you know, we, we've got entertainment, we've got you things to make you comfortable, and and at least get some enjoyment out of life with everything going on. But at the same time, there are things out there that want to eat you, and if they get through those walls, we're all screwed. So yeah. you know, just keep that in mind. 
but yeah, I, 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 uh, I was, I was, Alicia's, I, she's awesome, man. Like I really thought that was kind of her, you know, she's just willing to abandon the few, few friends she has left, not abandoned, but she just, I guess is like, screw it. Everybody's dead or, you know, going to die. I'm just going to take this one person that whose life, I don't know that I can help them. Whereas I do know that I can help her, which is never cool to abandon your friends, but she doesn't know where they are. I mean, like no clue, yeah. North, East, Southwest. She's like, screw it, man. I'm going to take this little girl and try to give her something uplifting during all of this. Yeah, I wonder if she's just so like afraid of losing more people. I think just, that's like, it. Yep. Keep my circle small. It, it. I don't know if you saw the uh, the movie The Road with Viggo Mortensen. It kind of gave me like shades of that. Just like with the father and the son after yeah, the nuclear just trying apocalypse. To find the coast, you know, oh, yeah, for whatever movie. reason they think they the coast might hold hold something. You know, to keep them alive. It's a very depressing movie. Very, I hear, yeah, the, I hear actually, the book's even more depressing. Oh, I, re- I read the book before I saw the movie, and like that, the movie was so true to the book, though I almost like didn't make it through the movie just because like you, you know, knew what was going to happen. Yeah, and it, yeah, man, super dark. The road was just whoo. Yeah, it was Cormac a good movie, McCarthy, man. man, doing some some stuff going on in that head. I don't know, man. But, but yeah, and I think that is what it is. I think part of her was scared to look for them just because she was scared of a not finding them or b finding them too late. You know what I mean? Like she yeah. thought, you know, I, so she just said, you know what? I'm going to spare myself the possible agony and just focus on what I can control, which is getting her to the coast and giving her something good out of all of this. Yeah. I mean, after surviving that basement flood, which, of course, our areas, we really got lucky with this hurricane, man. It, it, uh, we prepared my house, man. We stocked up and prepared for a category three is what they said the, the hurricane would be mm-hmm. by the time it came then it swings south and all we've gotten is rain gonna have some flooding around here soon yeah, yeah. but so, we got very lucky on that for the most part that, that's true definitely uh sympathy deepest sympathies to people out in those parts of north and south carolina they got hit hard it's mm-hmm. what do we see as of this morning 18 people yeah that's the last have thing died already, 18 yeah. people have 18. died um thousands without power it's it's it sucks man so if you're from those areas please comment below and let us know you're safe like when you mark yourself safe on facebook mark yourself safe in the comment section there you go let us know that you're good but uh we're thinking about you that's we we thought we were going to be there and like i said it just turned south and mm-hmm. so that you know a hundred dollars worth of foods that i had bought and batteries to prepare to be right. without power they were like you could be without power for weeks so i had stocked up just in case so we just yeah. snacked all weekend but yeah solid episode once again i'm trying to think if there's anything really big to cover oh n- uh, well, al where's al huh where's al oh. she stayed behind oh, and didn't right. answer yeah. the wa- if they kill her which they probably are it's fear of the walking dead they kill everybody but I'm going to be so sad. I like her character, man. Yeah, it's great. We got a lot of strong female uh, leads. You right really now. do out yeah. of this show, man. And then you, some could argue you get that from The Walking Dead, but this show, you know, I feel like The Walking Dead is basically Rick's manliness. And then you've got these awesome females, yeah. which I still think Michonne could be, give him a good run if she wanted mm-hmm. to. But this show really has, like, you know, I really just kind of, I uh, don't want to say dedicated to, but really made it an effort to give you these strong female characters, you know. We've really seen it, uh, especially this season. But, I mean, before you had it with Madison. You watched Alicia grow. Um, and and now you've got uh, you've got June. And Luciana. And Luciana. Neither one of them are uh, slouch at all. You know, they can handle themselves. And then you've also got Al, who I really like Al, man. I want more backstory on her. I, I'm really not ready for her to just die tragically. I feel like if she does, they'll watch tapes or something to – I feel like that's what's going to happen. Athena's going to die. Mm-hmm. But then what they're going to do is they're going to get the SWAT vehicle back, and then they're going to go through and watch her tapes, and it'll make us even sadder because she's dead. Yeah, and, and she said something to allude to the fact that maybe she lost a brother. Maybe. Cause, yeah, because she, she was talking to, uh, oh, jeez, it's early. Trucker lady's name. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, we, we really need a character list. But she was talking about, you know, it's, you know, Cherish this, this time you got with your brother because it's not easy when you when you lose one. Right. I, I don't know. God, well, I can't remember anyone's names. You remember all? We remember almost all of them. Um, it's 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 a few. I mean, it, it happens. It's early in the morning. We're not paid to analyze this show. I, we've only seen it once each. So, 
Um, but you know, anyways, um, yeah. So I am super stoked for this. I'm trying to. I was trying to be real nonchalant about it. I was trying to look up her name while I was yeah, talking. Jeez, Louise. I'm, so I'm horrible with names. To those and harsh internet critics, just in general. Yeah, we've got harsh internet critics. I'm like, how dare you podcast when you don't remember everybody's name? Well, I mean, we'll watch it once and then we talk about it. I mean, I remember everybody else's name, but there's always going to be like a character that. We haven't had that long. I love it. She calls Morgan Momo. Yeah, I love it too. I really hope that if he move, if he gets back to Virginia, I hope that sticks. Yeah. Rick will be like, "Hey, Morgan, that ain't Morgan. That's Momo." And then yeah. he's just like, "I like it, Momo." And then Morgan's just like, "Please don't call me that." And then everybody, Daryl's like, "What's up, Momo?" <laughs> yeah, man, I, I like all the uh, trucker lingo we got this episode as well. Really liking that. And her name's Sarah. Sarah. Duh. Sarah, I'm sorry. Sarah. I remember her brother's name, Wendell. Yeah, Wendell. Like, you know, they call each other, say they're brothers. But yeah. we learn a little bit of backstory about him as well. We find out that when he was 10, his friend ran into traffic after a ball, and Wendell did the selfless thing and pushed him out the way. And it was kind of really sad the way they, the, that dialogue was when he's like, you know, he got up and I didn't. Yeah. And then, um, you know, also he, he tried to enlist in the service and they laughed at him and. Which obviously, from what we see with Sarah saying she doesn't agree, she didn't agree with their code of ethics. It's apparently had something to do with her leaving the Marines. Yeah, yeah. Look forward to getting more backstory on that as well. All, all those these sweet new characters. All those poor, generous truckers that were killed by Martha. I know, man, and they were really kind of like reestablishing. I mean, they would have went on probably to reestablish like trade routes. Oh, to yeah. really kind of you know a lot of good could came from that. Yeah. I mean, that that could have been a, a beeline between, you know, Texas and Alexandria. I mean, that could have really helped reestablish civilization. But. And then, you know, she, another parallel to Morgan, we talked about the parallel of her, like, losing herself. She also straight up had the sharpened stick. You know, yeah. that first trucker that came there when she corrected her own, you know, from further to farther. She turned around. I'm like, don't turn your back on this woman. Like, I, in the yeah. apocalypse, man, I wouldn't turn my back on anyone I didn't no. know. I mean, like, it would be to the point where it's, even if they were friendly, it's like, y'all have a good day. And I would just start stepping back <laughs> into the woods, mm-hmm. you know, like, just because you don't know. And as soon as she turned around and bent down, like, draw, like correcting herself on the box, I'm like, oh, don't, don't turn your back on her. And then yeah. right through the throat. Right and then, through the throat. Oh, that was rough, man. And like, well, one of the first scenes we saw where uh, Morgan was making his way to Eastman, didn't he, like, impale someone in the throat with his big old mm-hmm. stick? Yeah, mm-hmm. so... It was a father and a son, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Morgan. Uh, yeah, man. It was, it was, you know, it was, I, at first I was drawing parallels with uh, Michonne just cause, you know, Michonne was using leashed zombies for camo and she, you know, she's weaponized. Martha's the using zombies. them for yeah. straight up attack dogs. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I man, I just we say it each each podcast, but I've just really been digging this show. A lot of people, I'm still liking The Walking Dead. Oh, and you're here. still liking The Walking of Dead. Course. I think we both agree it's not as glorious as it has been, but nonetheless, it's still a great show. We both really enjoy it. Yeah, and I think it's getting back to it. You right? Know? They it say is. this season's getting really back to its roots, like a season one, season mm-hmm. two feel to the show. So we're gonna see how that works out. And I mean, it's hard to make a show as big as The Walking Dead's gotten with such a huge cast of characters and not, you know. Nine years. I mean, yeah, it's hard to years. keep it fresh and yeah. interesting and new and to not let it get old. And you don't want to end up doing all the same things you've already done. So I'm sure it's, from a writer's standpoint, it's not an easy gig. Yeah. Um, but I am so glad that with that show kind of, you know, I, I, hopefully you've seen this, but this is kind of a spoiler for The Walking Dead. But if you haven't seen it, I, I don't know why you... You know, so tiny spoil with Rick leaving. Oh, um, yeah. you know, I, I I'm I'm kind of nervous about the future of The Walking Dead because you know, yes, I love Michonne, but we've said it before. Denai Guerrero's had so many movie opportunities because I mean, she is like one of my favorite people in Black Panther and one of my favorites in the MCU. She's mm-hmm. so badass, yeah. man. And uh, you know, with her, and I'm sure that this is just going to open more do- doors for her. She played Tupac's mom, then she was in Black Panther and Infinity Wars. So she's she's a busy lady, and I'm sure that this is just the beginning for her. She's an amazing actress, and I think that she's really going to make a name for herself. So as much as I do love Michonne, I fear that we're not going to see as much of her as we could because of other obligations, or if even her leaving the show because she realizes, wow, I'm really, you know, people start picking up on her talent and putting her in more movies. Um, and then 
I mean, I like Carol, but Carol's one of those characters. I'm sorry. I know someone's going to want to like kill me for this, but I just am kind of over it. And, like, I liked Carol. She's a badass. I don't want yeah, her I, to die. I don't no. think she sucks, but I'm not. Which, side note, have you seen the trailer, the newest trailer? I haven't seen the newest one, no. Well, I'm going to tell you this. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's what a little bit of a spoiler, but it was on a trailer, so I'm yeah, not spoiling okay. it no more than AMC. Her and Ezekiel kissed. It's happening. Oh we had God. said all like the last two seasons that her and Ezekiel would make a great couple, considering that the Michonne Ezekiel dynamic can't happen because of uh, Rick and Michonne, and we were like Carol and 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 uh, and Ezekiel would be great together. And from the trailer, it looks like they are. So oh boy. call us the podcasting cupids. Man, that it, 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 all it makes me think about is Rick not being on the show anymore. I don't uh, right, that's what I'm worried about. But anyways, I got way off track. But with yeah. with uh, with so many uncertainties in The Walking Dead, I'm glad that this show is still as good as it is. So at least we get to have something in that universe that we are looking forward to mm-hmm. and we know is going to be. Because I've, I've from season three up, man, I, seasons one and two were okay. They were a little slow for me at certain points. I fell off, had to get back on, and I've said that in other podcasts. But seasons three and four, man, I've just really dug. Like this season's had its slow points, but at the same time, I've never at any point felt like it was a chore to watch this show. Yeah, even the bottle episodes were uh, were really great. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you had your Alicia and Charlie episode, which normally I don't like those, just like mm-hmm. staying in one place type episodes, but. I guess their chemistry, the writing, and just this, it was just, I actually enjoyed it, you know, to be a bottle episode. I'd, yeah, it made me kind of think of a Night of the Living Dead, you know. Well, it had that feel. And see, what's cool is also, too, with this episode, it was mostly focused on Morgan, but we did get a little flash to Alicia and Charlie. I think that that is super important going forward is to intertwine some stories. Like, mm-hmm. don't keep it just one, you know, focused on one character or one set. Unless you've got a big enough or you know entertaining enough ensemble, like like intertwine it a little bit, even just the little clips with Charlie and Alicia. You know, compared to Morgan's group, you didn't see them near as much. But it was it's a nice to break away and come back. I think that's why Game of Thrones works so well because they fit so many stories into one episode. You know, but yeah, man, I, I, I'm digging it. I can't really think of anything else big to discuss. The end is near for Jim. We don't know where Al is. All I got to say is she better survive. I really like Al. Mm-hmm. Um, Alicia and Charlie may have found John Dorian Strand. We don't know, but it it seems to allude to that. In which case, again, Charlie and Alicia get away from the water. Um, we don't know where Martha is yet. You no. know, she kind of took off with the truck, and we hadn't seen her since. We just know she's riding around in an armored truck with machine guns inside. So, um, not a, not a good thing to be happening. Is there anything else I'm leaving? Like big kind of things we left off on? I I, I think we got it. Yeah, so let us know in the comments what you think. Is Al going to survive this? Why didn't she answer the radio? Uh, do you? How do you think we're going to see Martha again? Do you think that Alicia and um, Charlie found uh, Strand and John Dory, uh, you know, across the river? And um, what do you think Jim's last few hours will be like? You know, so uh, just let us know in the comments section. And keep in mind, again, I want to say this to reiterate, I don't. I typically don't watch. JP watches it on Amazon Prime um, because he's usually working at night when it comes on. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't watch Fear the Walking Dead. I love Fear the Walking Dead, but I typically go back and watch it after we podcast because I don't want to bite too much off of the things that they've talked about. I want us Are you to have about our own. Talking Dead. What did I say? You just said you don't watch Fear the Walking Dead. I was like, what? <sighs> what? I gotta get rid of those cats. Yeah. My girlfriend's cats. I'm so sorry. Yes. Duh. Rewind. Right. Can you so, do? You, so you don't watch Fear the Walking Dead until after we podcast? <laughs> right. Really? That is, I'm really man, good, man. I, I'm really good at predictions. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go take a nap. But no, I don't watch The Talking Dead because I, I don't. I don't want to bite off of that show. Of you course. know what I mean? I don't. I want to make our podcast our podcast, and I know that if I watch it, I'm going to talk about a lot of things that they talk about. And what's the point of our podcast? You could just watch The Talking Dead. So uh, if they did allude, to, if they answered some of those questions, like maybe if they found Strand and, and John Doris, let me know in the comments because I didn't see it. I'll, I'll go home and watch Fear the Walking Dead probably tonight or tomorrow, but not Fear the Walking Dead, The Talking Dead. Right. Can you grab me some coffee, please? Uh, we'll, we'll figure something. I need something. I got a long day. But yeah, so thank you so much for listening. Uh, I'm going to go take a nap. I don't know what JP's going to do. Uh, but we will catch you later this week for the Pool List Podcast. Granted, 
the flood doesn't prevent us from getting to the studio. Oh gosh, I hope not. Yeah, I hope too. it doesn't delay the cop- comic ship. I really need my truck back, man. My car does not do good in water, and my truck is you know my truck's lifted like pretty damn high. So no man, my going through day, we barely made it home last night. Going through some like you know water down areas isn't nearly as much of a challenge. Whereas yeah. with my car, it's not happening. So. But it's in the shop, so we'll see. But uh, we will catch you at some point. Bear, at the very latest, we'll catch you next Monday. Yeah. But hopefully we will, you know, we'll have our pool list podcast between now and then and whatever else we think of to, to podcast about. But uh, make sure to comment, subscribe. If you do subscribe, make sure to hit that little bell so you'll get a notification every Ooh. time we do a podcast. And uh, a like from you on this video wouldn't hurt either. We like it. We like the <laughs> likes. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. We will catch you soon. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we're the podcasting bit. Oh.